everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. Uh, thanks for watching this. In this episode, I'm kind of continuing the screenwriting stuff here, and we're going to show you how to technically format a screenplay. I'm going to be doing this in Writer Duet. Writer Duet is a free online software that you can use. It's almost like Google Docs, uh, but for screenwriting, where you're writing it online, it saves dynamically online as you're writing it. And uh, you can actually use it as a collaboration software as well. If you're working with somebody else uh, that's working from their home and you're working from your home, you can sit there. And it's just like Google Docs where you can just sit there. You can add people. Uh, you can share your documents with people. And then you can both write on it at the same time. And you see who's writing and who's changing. All right. But let's get into this here. Uh, if you're going to be using Final Draft, Final Draft is really what I recommend using as a professional software. Well, for this, since it's free, we're going to go through a writer do it. It's very similar to the way uh, Final Draft works as well. So first of all, we're going to talk, let's talk about scene headings. Scene headings, you make a new scene heading when you change uh, location and when you change uh, and when you change time or, or when there's a gap in time, I should say. So if I was uh, sitting in a kitchen and I stand up and I walk into the hallway and from the hallway, I walk into my bedroom, that's going to be three locations. If you see all that happen in the movie, uh, you're going to have interior kitchen, interior hallway, interior uh, uh, bedroom. And you might even want to get more specific. Let's go into write or duet here and talk about that. It's going to start off with a scene heading. So I'm going to start writing interior. It's going to be in all caps. This is inside. So interior space. I'm going to say uh, chin fat's home. Chin fat's home to be a general location. I'm going to put a hyphen and I'll be more specific. And I'm going to say kitchen hyphen. And then I put day. Now, uh, if I have some action here, what describes what I'm, what's going on. Let's just do some quick action. We'll just say uh, chin fat sits at a table. He gets up and exits the room. This is really simple. We're going to get into we're going to get into more detailed uh, information on what kind of things you do when you're doing action and description. But right here, this is just basic formatting here. So I'm going to hit return and say that's the scene there. I'm going to hit return again. And it brings up uh, this. It's going to say, what do you want to define this as? I'm going to define this as a new scene heading. And we're going to go to interior. Uh, I'm going to choose Chin Fat's home here and hit return. But we're going to get rid of kitchen. And I'm going to say hallway. And then I'm going to put a hyphen. And rather than put day, I'm going to put continuous. Because this is continuing. Uh, there's not a time gap. There's, this is continuous action from the kitchen to the hallway. Hit uh, continuous. There we go. Return. Uh, Chin Fat walks through the hallway toward the bedroom. I'm going to hit return again. And we're going to go down to the next one here. I'm going to hit return again. And then I'm going to go down to scene. This is a scene heading. And we're going to say interior. And I'm going to choose Chin Fat's home. And we're going to erase kitchen and write bedroom. And we're going to write continuous as well. Because this is continuing from the kitchen. It's all one movement from the kitchen to the hallway uh, to the bedroom. Seems a little bit kind of tedious doing that. But that's the way screenwriting works. And now I can write the action of uh, Chin Fat enters the bedroom and sits down on the bed or something. Whatever happens. Okay. So let's get rid of that. But let's talk about uh, writing an actual scene here. Uh, let me open, let me get a PowerPoint. And let's talk about writing action or description here. Some kind of general rules, some kind of general rules for writing action or description. These are the basic rules right here. Step one, visually describe the environment. If it hasn't been introduced in the screenplay yet, this, if you haven't described it in the screenplay yet, if it's a new location, describe what it looks like visually. And I'm going to give you an example here. Secondly, but uh, visually describe the general characters. If you're like in a classroom and you got several people in the classroom, you give kind of a general description of these are, are these like college students? Uh, if they are of various ages uh, and of various ages or something like that, uh, you could describe them and then uh, give a description so we can get a sense of what this, what this looks like. Because you are describing everything in a screenplay. It's like watching a movie. Where you're watching a movie, let's say you're watching a movie and you can't afford to take your mom to that movie. So you get on the phone, you call her up, and you say, hey, mom, I'm going to tell you everything that's happening in this movie as I'm watching it. So you're sitting there, and you say, okay, there's a, uh, there's a big uh, mountain and a big uh, green field, and in the middle of the field, uh, you know, it's all surrounded uh, by, by trees. In the middle of this field, is surrounded by a bunch of pine trees, and then there's this wooden cabin. like a, It looks like an old 1800s-style, uh, late 1800s-style cabin uh, sitting in the middle of the field. That's describing the, uh, that's describing, uh, the environment. And then you say, oh, the door just opened, and out walks this man. He looks like he's about a 50-year-old man dressed in, uh, uh, he's got like a raccoon skin cap on. He's got a big burly uh, fur coat. Uh, he's got a big thick beard, and he's got a pipe in his mouth. And he's got a big thick kind of graying beard. 
that's describing this character. That I, uh, I know I say to describe the character, general characters, but let's say that's the only guy that's in this, but I'm describing that main character. Then you describe what this guy do. You say he walks out of the cabin, he stretches, uh, he t- takes a look at the beautiful stretch of mountains, and then he grabs a, a pick or so, like a, a big like uh, a mining pick or something like that. And then he starts, walks 30 feet out from his cabin and starts shoving it into the ground. So that's describing what he's doing. Uh, all right, so let's go into step three here. Should we introduce the main character or the characters within the scene? Uh, we give an age uh, and visual description of the character or the characters or the main characters in the, in the scene. Uh, and then step four, we describe, explain what happens, describe the action, what what is happening. So once again, visually describe the environment, visually describe the general characters, visually introduce the main character within the scene, give an age and visual description of that character, more specific than the general characters, and then explain what happens and describe the action. Let's do that. So let's go back to writer duet here, and we're going to start writing. Um, we're going to start writing a, a scene heading here. So let's say this is our first scene heading here, and we're going to write in interior college classroom day. And you could put a generalized classroom. There's two ways of doing this. If you are uh, putting like this is taking place on Harvard, we could say Harvard campus. Just to be very specific, if it needs to be, if you got several college campuses and you're describing this one college campus, uh, this might be. But but you could also just do college classroom if it doesn't have to be specific like that. So it can look either way. Going to hit return. And now we're in an action or description prompt. So right here, this is a scene heading. And down here, this is going to be action or description. So let's start writing some action here. So in this action here, I just start writing the dimly lit classroom is full of modern day, uh, modern day computers with sleek HD displays, several movie posters from classic movies to line the wall. So I did a basic description of the environment. One thing that's really important with uh, writing action and description is to break up your paragraphs because you want to break up your paragraphs and make sure that they are uh, the, you don't want to write one big bulky paragraph that's super, super long. So after one to three sentences at the most, and once again, I'm going to recommend read professional screenplays, download the screenplays and read them, and you'll get a really good understanding of how these are formatted. But now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit return. Return goes to a new paragraph, and now we're writing action slash description again. So our second uh, general uh, suggestion here uh, is to uh, describe the general, we described the environment, now we're going to describe the general characters if there are other, if there are uh, characters there besides just like one or two. So several diverse college students of different ages sit at their stations. They fervently type away at their keyboards. Their screens glow with term paper, social media, and videos. Okay. So now we describe the, we describe the environment. We describe the basic characters that are there. There's several college students in the room. So now let's go to our next paragraph here. We hit return. It goes to our next paragraph and we're going to describe the teacher here. So there we go. Uh, all right. So we read this. So we wrote this out here. Ted, and in parentheses, you can put the age. It's a, a way of doing a quick description of this character, uh, giving us an idea of how old this character is. You can put mid-40s or something like that if you want to, but if you want to, you can just put the exact age. That's perfectly fine. Ted, 45, stands at the teacher station near a projector at the head of the room. Ted is the cliche professor. He is balding, sports a tweed jacket with patches on the elbows, thin rim glasses sit on the edge of his nose as he scans the room of students. So we uh, introduce the character. This is an important thing to do right here as well. The first time you introduce a character in a script, you capitalize their entire name. The next time we int- we uh, mention Ted, we don't have to uh, capitalize his name. In fact, you, you don't do that at all. You just do it once, the very first time the person shows up in the movie. There's the first time Ted's shown up in the movie, uh, and we and then we give him a physical description as well. We give a basic physical description, one to three sentences again, to describe what this character looks like. Hit return. We're back to more action here. And then we describe what happens. So we can type... Ted takes a deep breath, and he's getting ready to speak. So that's him taking a deep breath, getting ready to speak. So now we're going to do dialogue. Let's show you how to do dialogue. So I'm going to hit return. It goes down to action or description again, and you hit tab, and it jumps over to the character name. I'm going to put Ted. It's in all caps. It does it it format you for you. And then I hit return, and it goes down ready to start typing dialogue. Ted says, time's up. Hit return, and it goes back down to more action. So let's write a little more action here. Most of the students stop typing and put their hands down as their attention turns toward Ted. We introduce a new character here, out of the crowd here. One student, Tina, continues to type. She has a, then, now, so this is going to be kind of another main character here that we're introducing. So we got Tina in all caps because that's because uh, she. This is the first time we're introducing Tina. Uh, but then we do a physical description. She has uh, very. She has long, very straight black hair. 
uh, that has been gelled flat uh, for torn up bleached Levi's and dark t-shirt with the logo of the cure make a statement to the public I do what I want so this just like trying to be a little creative there I don't know if it is really creative but anyway but yeah you can put little creative kind of writing things in there like that but we're basically giving a physical description of this character that we are highlighting in the scene it's going to be highlight highlighted in the scene so we're going to hit return and we're going to do more dialogue I'm going to hit tab over to Ted do Ted hit return and the screen will play software automatically added continued, which means Ted is continuing talking. So if this was Tina that was talking, it wouldn't have continued. You wouldn't have to use continued. It has Ted if there's some action in between, and then it comes back to Ted and it's, it's continued. It does that automatically. He said, so we'll have him go in all time, because now he's getting pissed, so he's going to say time's up. And he kind of yells it a little louder like she didn't hear him. So going to hit return and type some more action in. So some more physical, so, so some more description of what is happening in the scene here. Ted does not exist in Tina's world. She types away and stares at her screen. Ted's lips pucker, his eyes squint. He slowly tightens his hands into meaty fists. So that's the visual action that we have going on here, describing what's happening in the scene. Let's do this. Let's have some. Let's have some. Uh, um, let's have some dialogue from Tina here. So I'm gonna hit return and hit tab over, and we're gonna. And right here, it's asking, do I want to hit enter to add T Ted's name again? I can just hit enter, and it adds his name. And now I can just say, Little Miss, what's your glitch so very cliche and now i hit return and let's have something uh from tina P tina maybe stops and looks up we'll have we'll say tina stops typing and slowly looks up to t and slowly looks up to ted hit return let's say we want tina to say something i'm going to tab over and we're going to type in tina return she says excuse me and then we have ted respond so we hit return we tab over hit enter to do ted assumes that you want to put ted I think you heard me. Hit return, tab over, and now we got Tina again. So we can, 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 we can continue the conversation. Let's say when the scene is done, let's show you how to do a new scene heading here. Uh, so if you want to do a new scene heading, we hit return. You hit return again, and then it asks, what do you want this prompt to be? I want it to be a new scene heading, and now we can type in the new scene heading. Interior, Ted's home, hyphen kitchen if we want, hyphen night. Hit return, and it goes back to a new action prompt ready for more action. So there we showed you scene headings. We showed you the basics of formatting uh, your your action. We showed you the character name. We showed you dialogue. Let's show you one more thing with dialogue here, uh, and that is using parentheticals. I showed this in an earlier episode, but just a kind of a reminder of how to do this in, in Writer Duet. If we want to put like a TED as a voiceover, this is called an extension. You just put a parenthesis like that, type in a parenthesis, and then it says, do you want to do this as a voiceover or off screen? We don't need to do that in this instance, but let's uh, let's hit return and we'll put a parentheses down here. We can hit tab now from here from the dialogue prompt. We hit tab and it turns it into parentheses and we can just say sarcastically or kind of explain how he's saying it. And now we hit return again and then it's back down to the, the dialogue prompt and he says sarcastically, ooh, look who's smart. So yeah, so that that uh, we, well, like I said, we mentioned that in a previous episode on how to do the parentheses and extensions and whatnot. But that's how to kind of access those things inside of Writer Duet. And it's very similar if you use Final Draft, if you use Celtics, it's very similar kind of return, 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 tab, tab, tab to kind of get to those uh, spots that you need to to get it to format it properly. Lastly, when you're done with a screenplay, if you want to export it, out, if you want to save it as a uh, as a PDF, you have this export default PDF function. You can just click on that. And then it will download it right there in your download folder as a PDF. Then if you open it up, written by Charning Liel, I should put Chin Fat. But then here's the screenplay formatted in the format that uh, in a PDF format. And then you can email this off to somebody. And then you make your awesome movie about a teacher and a student having a big confrontation in the classroom. So anyway. All right, well, that's it for this episode. Uh, just the basics of how to format your screenplay and write or duet. If you have any questions or comments, please post them. And thanks for watching Chin Fat. Until the next episode.